We already know two ways to generate random samples, but we don't know why random samples are super important, and we also don't know how you can go wrong with generating random samples. So today I'm gonna to show you some examples of both of these things. So consider uh, you're interested in knowing what the school politics are. So you wanna know whether your school is left-leaning or it is right-leaning, so you're interested in school politics. So what's a good way to get a sample of students from your school? So one thing you might think of is that your school has lots of dorms, maybe 30 dorms. What you could do is you could go to one of the dorms and you could survey all the people there, right? Each person has an equal chance to be in your survey. So that seems pretty random. But there's a problem here. Uh, the problem is that people of similar mindsets tend to live together. And so if you survey a dorm, it's very likely to be either highly left-leaning, because lots of left people live there, or highly right-leaning, because lots of right-leaning people live there. In a very concrete example of this problem, consider you asked your friend, hey, what's your political opinion? And after you ask them their political opinion, you ask them to refer other people that you can ask who the, what their political opinions are. So you get your uh, sample by referral. What's the problem here? Well, again, if you're left-leaning, you're very likely to have left-leaning friends. And if you're right-leaning, you're also very likely to have right-leaning friends. So in both of these situations, you're likely to get back a survey, a sample, that's either very left-leaning or very right-leaning, that's not necessarily indicative of what the school's actual politics are. So what's the problem? What's the commonality? The commonality between these two things is that in the dorm survey and in the referral-based system, the samples are not independent of each other. One sample depends on another one. So in the referral system, each sample has to be linked in some sort of friendship bond. So you need to be either friends or friends of friends with someone else. And in the dorm survey, each person in your sample needs to be in the same dorm. In one sense, the people in your samples are dependent on one another or make up a smaller subgroup. So what's a good way to actually assess your school politics? Well, one way is that you could go ahead and you could scrape the web. So you could go ahead, go to your school's registrar or something like that, and scrape the entire website and find everyone's email address in your entire school. Then, once you have all of the email addresses, you select randomly from all of the email addresses, and you would, in case, get a true random sample. So we've discussed some problems that can happen with generating random samples. The major problem is that your samples or your people inside the sample will be dependent on one another. We've also discussed the problems with having this dependency, that you're very likely to get lopsided samples. So in one case, you might be very likely to get very left-leaning samples, or in another case, you might be very likely to get very right-leaning samples. So hopefully you understand why random samples are so important and what we can do in order to get them.